All right, we're back, and it's a very, very similar list to last time. Last time was the original blue-white affinity, and this time it's a slightly tweaked version of blue-white affinity. You can see that we've cut the mirror enforcers completely from this list, and we've dropped a ginger brute. What we've replaced is we've replaced those two mirror enforcers with two Emery Lurker of the Locks, so that way we can recur artifacts from our graveyard. Whether that be bobbles, ginger brutes, cranial platings, nettle cysts, whatever we need that they've removed, we'll be able to get back. And then we replaced a ginger brute with a shadow spear because being able to give things lifelink and trample, pretty good. Imagine having out a 2-2 two, two, or a 3-3 three, three, um, construct and giving that construct lifelink and trample. Not going to be terrible. Other than that, our main board is exactly the same. So, I think. No, this list has one more Memnite and one less Welding Jar. I don't know how I feel about that. We'll see how it handles. And then we also have one more thought cast because we cut a bobble. Okay. So that's it for the main board. In the sideboard, what we've got going on is relatively the same thing. We've got the Ether Sworn Cannonist for the decks that are trying to cast multiple spells in a turn, whether that be Cascade or Prowess. We've got the Disenchants for the decks that are running Stony Silence, like that awful last match. I was not expecting Jess guy. Dispatch for creature removal because being able to exile things, pretty good for one white mana. And then metallic rebukes instead of spell pierces because most of the time it's the same mana cost of one blue. We will typically always have one or two artifacts out for the improvised part and then it makes them have to pay one more mana. And this hits creatures. Relevant to be able to hit the creatures versus only non-creatures. And then we've got two etched champions because who doesn't love when they're packing a lot of creature removal? A creature that they can't remove. And then we've got two soul guide lanterns and then a pithing needle and a graph digger's cage. The reason for the needle, cage, and lantern all being one drops. Where's the saga? Allows us to go and grab it off of that third ability. That's the rundown of what we're trying to do here in Blue White Affinity. And let's take this one into a match and see how we can do with it. All right, match number one here versus I Stock. They won the die roll. Play. Opponent. Alright, match number one versus I stock here. They won the die roll. This is one, two, three, four artifacts. Turn one, six artifacts. Turn two, meaning we can have the companion and equip on turn three. This is fine. Arguably, there's hands that are faster, but not by much. We have to kind of hope that they're not super insane. And just drop this out, and this would be where something like Signal Pest, not a bad card to be running. Opponent cracks the Verdant here. It's themselves a triome. That is the island mountain forest. Say that like I can't just do this. There we go. And it changed. So double triome. Is this the So all they're missing is planes? 
is the type that they're missing. Ink Moth Nexus. A fun one. And do this and swing for one. Pony gonna let us swing for one. Maybe Pony has main board shattering spree and is debating about hitting it just once since they probably won't have another red for a while. The world may never know. Get in there, Memnite. Go the distance. I believe. Reflecting pool is played. So next turn's probably actually Nexus into Companion, and then equip and hit for Puku. Especially, oh, it's one man of any type that'll land the they control for Reflecting Pool. Makes sense. This happens, we draw, that's not a bad draw. You come on, Nexus into Springleaf Drum. Into Companion. To equip to an Ornithopter. You're gonna unholy heat the ornithop. Okay. Why not wait until combat? Because now we're still in main phase and I get to do this again. As the assassin's trophy. I mean, we don't have a way to stop the destruction, but we will gladly go get our island. Get in for one. Go, Memnite. Go the distance. I believe. Swamp. Lurus to hand. I had completely forgotten that they were a lower stack. I don't even think I noticed, actually. Chromatic Star, huh? That's an artifact. I like it. Then we draw a fun card. Podcast. Mem Knight, go the distance. Hold back the O2. I say Mem Knight, but now we've got the companion. Companion's going to make quick work. Unless they can answer. But they are black. Thoughtseize, sounds good. Take my miss. Oh, wait. <laughs> Mox Amber. Luris, K. Okay. Luris can't get you anything. Why? Because you can cycle star and replay star. Yeah. 
This we draw. Unfortunate draw by us. This, that, and tap like so. Quit. No, just animate. Now you're dead six ways from Sunday. Where do you choose the block? Because that plating's going wherever you choose not to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Like to equip cranial plating to the ornithopter. Black and tap for black, like so. As the push, some might have push. The cycling star to try to find it. Damage. Oh, they gain life. I'm moving and I'm undecided if I want a green screen going forward or not. Any tips? Um. Green screens are interesting if you've got the, if you're into a smaller room and you can differentiate yourself from the rest of your background. I like, I've got these lights that you can kind of see when I get close. That, that's what's lighting that green screen so that way it's a solid color behind me. If you've got the room for that and you can get at least one light on you. Uh, go for it if you want the green screen look if you can't really do the whole lights behind you this is kind of what will happen you turn both of these off and while it's not too noticeable especially right now since there's ambient daylight um there will be artifacting in these corners of the green screen just not quite matching so if you either go with a higher chroma key, you can solve that issue or fix it by having the lighting. And as you can see, I did get brighter by doing that because of my light. Because I have auto ISO stuff. So green screen's now lit up. And now I look like this. It's a little bit different. It's, you know, up to you. If that's the look you're going for. So there are two. I just have to attack. All right. So they could technically have. If I'm swinging, they lose. Because I get to instant speed change where that cranial plating is attached to. Snap. Snap trophy. Snap unholy heat. Sure. That's the wrong target there, opponent. Yeah, sounds good. What are you blocking? You're blocking there? Make you have the answers. I mean, it's still just straight up two damage. Been a busy Sunday here, but wanted to drop and say, hey, how's the deck doing? Um, hey, thank you very much for the resub, PBGBs. I appreciate it. Um, honestly, deck's been doing pretty all right. Um, this is match one of the second league, and we currently just won game one there. But the first league that 
the deck didn't have the Emery's and the Shadow Spears. It had a couple of different things. And it we went 2-3 with it, but I probably could have... I had one major misplay, which probably ended in the loss, which could have ended in a 3-2 instead. So take that with a grain of salt. I like champions here because they are black, red, and blue. They don't exactly have... All of their removal seems to be targeted. Uh, we'll take out a thought cast here. Um, thought cast and yeah, like the ornithopters. We can shave a memnite. Now we need. We didn't see white, so I'm not too concerned about Ather Stony. Didn't have a lot of creatures. They didn't seem to be doing a whole lot, so Canonist isn't what we want to be doing. Do we want Needle or Cage? Cage shuts off Snapcasters. I don't think that's going to be relevant. Soul Guide Lanterns are mad. They didn't seem to be much of a graveyard type deck. Yeah, us having the Shadow Spear. It'll be fun to see that card show its greatness. Um, Giant trampling constructs always give people trouble. Yeah. Or just a 3-3 three, three that you can't target. That seems pretty good. I think it's bringing the rebukes. Cut the thought casts completely. Go like so. Ba -ba 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 -ba. This guy. Back in the Memnite and cut another companion. Let's see how we can do. So, turn one, not phenomenal. Turn two, pretty strong. I like it. Unless they are a white deck and have the turn two stony. Which we would get absolutely destroyed by. But we didn't see any white. We'll try it. Bobble. Bobbles themselves. Bloodstained Mire. Likes the card off of Bobble. See what we draw here. If this is Springleaf Drum, we change our game plan. It is not. Our game plan is still that land. Drop three. Pass turn. Bloodstained Mire gets Triome. Okay, Salt Eye Triome. Versus Saga. So, okay. Thought Seize. Do you take the Emery or do you take the Rebuke or the Plating? It's probably Emery. Because if you take the plating and play the emery. But you need an answer to the plating. Might already have an answer for the emery.
They do indeed take the Emery. Where'd Dog go? Dog brushed against Slag. I was going to pick up Dog and we were going to have fun Dog Cam for a second. Hey, hi. Yeah, I know. I know. I stole you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't lick the mic. Silly dog. She's cute. Ooh, an Urza Saga, huh? I mean, I guess we'll play this Saga game, right? What's the worst that they could have on turn three? Exactly. <laughs> Plating. There's a slight difference between my board state and their board state. But they might be able to do things, so we never know. Oh, she found the chip bag. That's what she's playing with. And it's just aluminum. She's not gonna kill herself with it, so. A shadow Spear. All right. Didn't make a construct and we're trophying. Yeah, I'll gladly take our island. Because this now means that I have a construct. And I get to hold up Rebuke. All right, let's get in for two. Whatever they do here, we counter. We cannot counter the Urza Saga, but they have themselves a 3-3. Three, three. I wonder what their deck's trying to do with Saga here. Pithing Needle names Urza's Saga. That is brutal. Did not see that one coming. Thought seizes. Rebuke. And you knew about the rebuke. You don't know what's in hand. This triggered ability. Sadness that I can't make constructs. Say yes. Guess at this point. Grab spear. Yeah. I guess also shadow spear. Do this. Do spring leaf drum. Equip two. That way we have ourselves a one three with flying and trample and lifelink. No point to swing with the one ones. At this point, we are looking for plating. Assuming they're just gonna equip their shadow spear. Oh, they put Luris to hand. Okay.
And they hold back. We draw. What do we draw? We draw an Emery. Well, that's arguably our best and worst draw there. Because they've got the spell bomb and the Luris. That means that we're going to be doing just about nothing. Damage happens. Second main, we'll play out Emery. We then mill four. Oh, we had a good four there. We're gonna equip to M Knight. And pass the turn. I'm assuming they're gonna spell bomb. It might have a land in hand to be able to draw off the spell bomb first here. Okay, they're just gonna wait for us to target. That's fine. Oh, but they wanna keep the construct as big as possible too. They're in an awkward situation here, aren't they? Yep, they spell bomb, hit our graveyard. That's what we expected. Because you don't let me untap with an Emery. This we draw. What do we draw? What do we draw? What do we draw? Something fun. They want to see what we're drawing. Okay. We drew a land. Well, that's unfortunate. Whip. Combat one. Move the equipment back over to the Memnite. And pass the turn. So they're going to be able to just bobble value us into oblivion here, is my guess. But if they're, because they don't ever need to spell bomb until that, uh, now they're going to play out Brainstone and they're going to construct us. Interesting with the pitting needle on the saga. Wasn't expecting that one. Whips the Shadow Spear. Now they have themselves a 6 6 with lifelink and trample. It having lifelink is the problem. Yeah, we take it. Cranial plating? It's not cranial plating. Alright. Bobbles us. Sounds fine. Begin combat. Swing for two. Doesn't block with his Luris. Gee, I wonder why. Whip to there. Now we can block. Yep, 5-5, five, five, make it a 6-6. Six, six. They played their bubble from the yard, so we are safe to block here. There's a Saga, that's a nice... Tutor effect in three turns. <sighs> Tough game two here.
Why are we swinging with the Luris? Has me concerned. Damnation. Gonna activate Lyric Emery. And just in case they have indestructible, I don't think they do, but go ahead and activate. And then we draw land of fun. And now we both get to sit here. So four color artifacts, huh? Interesting deck, not gonna lie. Yes, now we draw Ginger Brute. That's a fun one. Ginger Brute, do that. We have ourselves a 2 2 with Life Link and Trample. Rock established. What are you trying to summon here? This blue snapcaster. Sure. Snapcaster trophy. Gingerbread can't be blocked. Then they're going to trophy our shadow spear. Sadness. You get in for one. Where's the saga? Gets to go and grab something. Grabs the cookbook. Okay. I'm at just completely confused as to what their deck's doing. Seeing a bunch of one drop artifacts and then Dot sees Assassin's Trophy Damnation. It's in. Why not equip the. I guess if they need the five mana? What are you casting for five mana? Dot Monitor. Neat, we get to draw two. We draw fun two. Swing for one. Opponent doesn't block. Cool. Second main swing leaf. Into Ornithopter. Arguably, I should be playing around second damnation here. But I don't care. Cookbook returns Luris to hand. Okay. Now they have land to fetch Luris. Bobble. Yeah, I'm, I'll take two every day of the week here. Doesn't have lifelink. Let's 
second. Snap. Snap damnation. Okay. I have a 9-9 nine, nine and a 2-2. Two, two. Can you have another way to do damnation effect? Yay or nay, opponent. You've got a Luris. I know that much. Nice Luris. You can Luris and Snapcaster. And then what? You have Spell Bomb. You have bubble. Gonna go with the bubble plan. All right. Bubbles themselves. And draws a card. I think they liked what was on top. Nature's claim. Understandable why they like that card on top. Pretty good. Fifteen all, but they have lifelink. We need cranial plating. Bubble. Sure. Ba -da -ba. Swing for two. Greenstone. All right, let's see what cards you put on top, opponent. Verdant Catacombs. Fun. Place their shuffle effect. Just down to 12. Down to 10. Iteration. And they exile with iteration here. Unholy heat. So they get delirium or dot monitor. Neat. So they've got one card in their hand that they grabbed. They're going to hit us for four, so we've got four turns to find it out. Hmm. Cookbook. This we draw two. Ba -da -ba. All right, not terrible. We play out the Ornithopter so that way we can buy ourselves a turn more. Although it does have Trample. But two toughness does make a difference. Grin and Ping. Grabs the Saga. I'm dead by the time that Saga goes off. Okay. Hmm. Iteration, sure.
Ren and Six entered the exile zone, huh? So, Cranial plating off the top wins us this game with the Ink Moth Nexus. Okay. We'll take it. Down to seven we go. Cranial plating. Etched champion. Just as good. Drown in the lock, you're gonna counter the S champion? Sure. Animate the Ink Moth. And attack them. Second trigger versus Saga. That needle's doing God's work for us. Snapcaster, Snapcaster gets back what? Expressive iteration? Nature's claim. Okay, they have nature's claim. Nature's claims their own needle. There we go. Here's a saga, plays there's a saga. Makes a food token. So I'm dead next turn anyway, no need to block. Maximize the number of artifacts, and that is not what we want. Go ahead and make I have to click through. We're not going to bother getting in for one. Since we got game one here, and they're going to be down to five minutes with game two. Did you stack your triggers wrong, opponent? Is out brainstone. Hitting needle is bugged, I guess. Um, no. Hitting needle wasn't bugged there. That ain't the needle there, bud. You definitely could have made a construct, you just did not try. I agree with everything that we have. Disenchant it seems pretty decent though. They're a pretty artifact based deck. And they're artifact based, so pro colors isn't really what we want. It's good to blank their removal though. Yeah, 
Yeah, we'll just run it like that. Opponents saying that Here's a Saga was bugged with needle, or Pitting Needle was bugged. It was not. They just did not order sequence that correct. Um, well, Mulligan doesn't do much. This, however, we will keep. Bottom, Mist Vault. Say done. You, this, that, this, that. We gotta stop on their upkeep. Let's see what they're drawing. Drawing a swamp. All right. Blood Crypt tapped. Bobble. And fun. Goes in at us. Yes, draw, draw. Cranial plating. Eh, that's not a bad one. A little low on lands for the plating, but that's fine. Back all. And take opponent down to 16, pass the turn. I'm playing like I'm the guy in red, but that's them. This draw thought monitor. Springleaf drum for six. Tap like that, do this. Draw ourselves some more cards. There we go. Have lethal next turn. God damn nation. Pitting needle. Name's cranial plating. Yep. So two, four, eight, nine, ten. Take them to three. Saga. Ouch. Second plating hurts. Hold the zero two back. Get in for as much damage as possible here. Bundle down to three. And let's go ahead and play out plating. Show me damnation. So that's what you need here. There you go, there's your damnation. You're now at three. Hmm. Loris to hand. Income off Nexus. Plating. Fast turn. So if we were the blue red variant, we would have enough reach here. White, white. One, let's go ahead and drop the nettle cyst. Have ourselves a seven, seven. Fetch down to two, nature's claim, we gain four. Okay. Alpine Moon names Ink Moth Nexus. Has this on an eight turn clock? Gaining life here is 
bid for them. Emery, mill four, best turn. Disenchant, that's not bad. Pushes Emery, that's fine. It's in for three. Plays Bobble. Bobbles us to see what we're drawing. This we draw, we draw an Ornicrafter. Blocks for a turn, buys us more time. Bobble, bobbles themselves, or us. Just to constantly know what we're drawing. Take that block. Yes, you gain life, but I don't lose life. Drexteel Citadel is known. Since they know it, they're always going to know we'll just play anything. Bobble is fine. I'm about to have to start discarding. Yes, we draw a jar. Fun. Bobble, they bobble us. Down to nine we go. Drum pass. Where our outs are disenchant or more creature removal. Actually, one doesn't chance, not enough. Brennan ticks. Doesn't change your clock. Don't care. Bobble, that's fine. Once we get a redraw, although we're dead to the Renin 6, double ping, because this takes us to 4, and now we go to 3. Ooh! Give him the GG's there. Because they've got it. Let them have it. Long game one there, for match one. Interesting. We went a bit in, we could have held back the Ornithopter after we played with the Thought Monitor. It wouldn't have bought us anything because it was cranial plating, which they had named off of the Pithing Needle. So, they'd still be in this end situation, we'd have out one more Ornithopter, we'd get one more turn, which would have been a Darksteel Citadel. So yeah, wouldn't have bought us anything there. We're 0 and 1. So. Turn 1, not much. Turn 2, we're missing a land. So we can't do a turn 2 thought cast. Um, we could try to hit. I don't think that's what we want to try to do. I think we want to mulligan this and try for a better hand. Keep bottom of saga because we can go turn one, razor tide, turn two, uh, mist vault plus emery. Then we have turn okay, we're facing a delver deck. 
This hand might not be great. Here's his head bridge, pass the turn. We're basically going to be trying to use our Emery to help us dig, which is not what we want to be doing. All right, they have a counter spell. Good to know. Thought <laughs> scours themselves, hits two lands. And this is definitely blue red. Might be blue red white. I don't want to have to deal with that. The second memory there is not what we wanted to draw. You can't have force here. I guess you could have... Would you even run subtlety in a deck like this? I don't know. So we hit plating, plating, thought cast. Well, I mean, we're going to be playing platings, apparently. Okay, Spire Bluff Canal. Oh, that's interesting. They did miss their land drop on turn two. Didn't even process that that happened. So, Channeler, not good. And another Delver. Not good at all. This we draw, we draw Razor Tide Bridge. I'll do plating, cast the plating. And... Guess we'll play down a bridge. Because we didn't hit any zero drops there. Delver flipped counter spell. Okay, they've got lots of counter magic. And two of their five cards are counterspell. And Swing's House. Down to seven we go. Meaning we are dead if they can hit a card type. Frogmite. A two. And do this. And do Urza's Saga. Our hope is that we can just flood the board. As counterspell for this one. Which puts a creature into the yard, and now they have three flyers. Can't beat that. We could bring back the companion, but we're just dead in the air. Okay, duck. So, counter magic dot deck. Uh, rebukes. And I saw Merktide Regent, meaning it's blue red Delver. I don't know if this is the. Jeskai variant, and they're about to just blow us out of the water with another Stony Silence. Because we did not see any Jeskai effects or lands that game. Um, Want to bring in the lanterns. So we're bringing in seven. We have to cut seven. Shave a thought cast, shave on. 
companions. We like the Emery's and the Thought Monitors. We'll shave on Ginger Brutes. We're not really getting in that way. Memnites are cut. Um, cut a second Memnite. And I guess cut a Frogmite? Yeah. Get those seven, bring in these seven. Um, want to keep Spear around because lifelink's going to be important. Like everything else, this is just hope we don't get blown out of the water by Stony Silence. Probably try to keep a rebuke if we can. Turn one, turn two. Sure. Yahtzee. Misty Rainforest cracks the rainforest. Gets a steam vents. Shocks in a steam vents. Plays out a Delver. You got it, opponent. That is a Delver. What do we draw? We draw an Emery. Not bad. Uh, cast. There we go. You want to trade your Delver? I take two. Does Delver flip? Delver does not flip. We did get a land though. Second Delver, okay. It's in for one, yeah. This we draw. What do we draw? Something good. Frogmite, huh? Swing for two. Delver doesn't block. Okay. I would like to play out an Emery. This will hit. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. What do we hit? Paying costs. Are we bolting the Emery? And just making it so I mill four cards. Like, what are we doing? Blue. We're bolting the Emery, okay. So we did just end up milling for... Pretty big whiff. Nice.
Granted, we would have loved any of those lands. Do they flip? All right, Delver does flip. So they now have six. Here's hoping they overcommit. So they do get in for six. This we draw, we want land. Should have specified untapped land, shouldn't I have? Actually, undo, undo. Because I can do that post combat. Get in for four. Yep. Cranial plating. Assuming counter spell. Bot scars themselves. It's mystical dispute and seer visions. All right. So now they have to hold back one or else they can't unless they have removal. Swings for six. We go down to seven. Hmm. This and we draw campaign costs. Okay. White equip gear. Opponent was smart and let us go to the beginning of combat. Smart opponent. Yeah. What do we have? Urkel's recall, huh? Of course, it's all artifacts. So all of those get bounced to our hand. Well. Yep. Because we had to use the Glimmer Void. If we hadn't used the Glimmer Void there, we still couldn't play out the Thought Monitor. So this is Swing for six. And we go down to one. Already thought scoured. We need to find Warner Crafter. Ouch! Two damage. And we go to negative one. Owen too. How you doing, Fluff? We're not doing too hot.
Urkel's Recall is a fun card. Uh, we had the counter magic in our deck if we had drawn it to stop it, but we didn't. And magic's just not going to show us what we were going to draw. That's fine. It knows you should never look anyway. This is being broadcasted because of advanced audio settings. Desktop audio 2 is on all tracks. Oi. You're probably not wrong. So this, yeah, this is fine. Well, now you probably can't hear it at all because it's on system. Ba -ba -da -ba, this. Ooh, bobble. That's a turn one thought cast. A finna Yahtzee. Dang it. <laughs> Sound is perfect now. Yeah, like I said, it's because it was... I had changed things in settings, and Desktop Audio 2 was being broadcast on Audio Track 1. Oh, great. That means all of them are going to have this Desktop Audio on all tracks. Boo hiss. Tide Hollow Sculler? Sure. What does your Sculler take? It takes the Thought Monitor. Doesn't want me drawing even more cards. Huh. I say huh like there's a question as to what we do. Here's the saga. Pay the mana. Combat. Get in for two. And we'll bobble on their upkeep now. Now that we will no longer be needing to hold for affinity for artifacts. Yeah. Godless Shrine is what they hit. Let's see what trouble we can find ourselves in here. Tapped Godless Shrine. Doesn't get in with their Tide Hollow. Makes sense. Hmm. That's a lot of land. Play out the Dark Steel Citadel. Combat. Offer opponent some trades. One doesn't want to trade. Yeah, like I don't know that you can boot up the Inkmoth Nexus and then use the Springleaf Drone to tap for mana. Yep. I've played too much of this deck to know that line every once in a while where you just need the colored mana. That's a sort of fire and ice. Go ahead and make our token. Because who doesn't love a 7-7? Seven, seven? I mean 8-8. Eight, eight. Also, what is this draw? Hmm. 
can go ahead and make the 8-8. Eight eight. Do this. We can't needle the fire and ice, but we can shadow spear. That's a card. This. Whip to there. Tap the Memnite, tap the Saga. You got the path opponent? I mean, you kind of got to deal with the 1010 lifelink trampler. Solitude evoked. That's fine. You're going to evoke and gain me 10 life? Yep. That is fine. I will gladly gain 10. Black, you mean white, because you're going to ephemerate? Oh! Spicy! That's an interesting way to go about it. And get rid of the other construct? Sure, I'm now at 38. You're going to take six, go down to three. All right, opponent. Because we just jump whatever the sword goes on to twice. I'm going to say, because at this point you're on blocking duty, aren't you? Hmm. Oh, we we equipped the sword to the companion. And they have a 5 and 4 to block our 5 5. And I guess they have life link. Also, we just don't block. We're at 38. Just realized <laughs> Emery's a fun one. So this, if we suit up, we then can't make a token. I like making tokens. If we suit up and swing out, they block here and force block here. They take Two, they go to one, they can't crack their fetch land. They would have to basically have ephemerate. It's just strictly the right line. We don't need the token. Attack with everything, keep the ornithopter back. Yes, they can gain five. Oh, interesting. They block like that and take zero, effectively. We go to 43. Uh, that happens. Now we go this. Tap for blue. Play out Emery. Pull ourselves four. And we got a bunch of fun toys. Opponent is still at three. They can gain five. And then take three, but let us draw cards. Probably not what they want to do. 
but that's what they're gonna do. Meaning, do they have a flicker effect here? No, they just want to get rid of the Emery. But fair enough. Emery's a pretty scary card. They go to eight, so now they definitely have the Marsh Flats available to them. Hey, fetch. Out of planes. Silent clearing. Do they draw a card? White, white, three. Five mana. What are we casting at five, opponent? I guess hard cast solitude was their plan. And then they realized that it has flash. And keep we draw. We'll go ahead and create. Do ourselves a 7-7. Seven, seven, do this. And that's a evoke is exile. So we can just ginger brute. Yeah, just ginger brute here. Is this we could technically get in for two if we wanted to. Boot up the inky. Swing like so. Make them forced to have the solitude. Yep. Solitude is shown. And now they exile that. Yep. We go to 43. They take one infect. And we pass the turn. Hmm. Solitude number three. Skyclave. That is non-token. So I guess that takes our Shadow Spear. Takes the ginger brute. Okay. I'm concerned as to why they took that. Down to five they go. Stoneforge, get themselves a weapon. We know about the godless shrine. It's already played. That was from a long, long time ago. Hmm. And gets themselves a Caldra. Makes sense. So they tapped out. And they left us with Shadow Spear. We know one of their cards is a colorless card. Two, six, eight, ten, twelve. Twelve is the number that we're looking to beat. We cannot beat that number. But we can get dang close. Because this has lifelink and trample.
So you have to block at least five of it. Okay, both the solitudes are being blocked. Anything else? I'm going to try to kill here. Because this is eight. You just need two more points and you can trade. All right. I'm fine with this. We gain 10, they gain 8, they lose 4. Yep, 4 2 4. Down to 9, they went. And we're at 53. Well, yes, they have the cauldron now. We, they've got two unknowns and cauldra complete. This is lethal. The indestructible on the cauldras are going to be annoying here. But it doesn't make the token indestructible. It's just the equipment itself, I believe. Doesn't block. Okay. All right. So facing taxes. Needle's not a bad card. Neither is disenchants. This patch is maybe? And they don't have a lot of removal. They are black white, so they could have push and pav. We didn't see any of that game one. We did see solitudes though. And this is pro color. So we need to shave some things. M Knight's pretty weak on this side of things. And it's hard to cast the companions early. Now I need to cut one more. Um we'll cut a fragmite. Those five out, these five in. What else did we bring in? Oh, the needle. Yeah. So those five in, these five out. We're upping our curve a bit. Let's... Yeah. Don't think we'll need the dispatches. Need the rebukes. They don't really play more than one spell a turn. They're not a graveyard or library strategy. Hmm. Nope. Nope. We can keep bottom and bottom. We're not doing much. Makes that tide hollow scholar pretty good. Or this thought sees. Missed Vault, pass turn. God, I hope that they don't have the... Um... Stony Silence. Considering that they kept seven, though... I'm concerned. Courtyard into Silence. 
Revoke existence. Okay. Kataki. Yeah, buddy. So Kataki is the hate that they're bringing. Yes. Artifact land. Pass the turn. You don't know what their hate is, at least. Tide Hollow takes that monitor. Eh, probably not, because we're never really getting to seven. Ephemerate. Um, we're not going to beat the Kataki. Let's just go ahead and save time and move on. Kitaki, so we want dispatches, definitely. And rebuke. Okay. Do I need to cut five cards? Cut thought cast monitor. Actually. Yeah, like so. Yeah, I really hate diluting like that, but we need answers. Love to take the play. Turn one, turn two, and that gives us four mulligan. Here we go. We can definitely keep this one. I don't know what we're putting back, though. So, like, I like leading on Razor Tide. Razor Tide into Glimmer Void, leaving up Disenchant or Rebuke because we can bobble. I guess it's we're putting back the spear. Keep like that. <laughs> So that way we have Rebuke and Glimmer Void. I guess I try to do the Revoke Existence on a land again. That was mean. Shocks it in. Glimmer Void, pass turn. Because we're not going shields down into a stony silence here. All right. Emery. Play out the saga. So this, and then we can Yeah, we'll go ahead and use Bobble. Damn. One, two, three, vindicate. It's a good attempt. 
Metallic Rebuke. Okay. Nice. Not a bad set of cards to draw there. We're just gonna pass here. If they do something that we have to answer, we can answer it. If they don't, we're good. Marsh Flats. He draws a card with the silent clearing. In their instep, we will definitely go ahead and just make ourselves a token. Just a 2-2. Two -two. This draw saga. <sighs> we'll go shields down for a turn. We don't have to go shields down. Because we do this and we get ourselves. We could pivot needle name Marsh Flats if we really wanted to. That'd be funny. But no, we get Spring Leaf Drum here. And play out a Saga. And now we have Disenchant and Dispatch up. I'm going for the push. Sure. That is fine. We still have Dispatch and Disenchant up. I'm gonna use that dam to destroy my construct. Floating a white and using Marsh Flats. Getting another white. <laughs> Playing Skyclave Apparition. That's a card. You're gonna try to eat my Springleaf Drum. In response, we're gonna float a white. That'll happen. There goes your Skyclave Apparition. Oh, wait. That's right. I lose artifacts. Yep. That's the punt. Because I no longer have the artifacts for it. <laughs> it still tapped it down. Say so we didn't need the exile, right? So five, I could hit for ten. Don't really need to hit for 10 right now. Hitting for 4 is probably plenty. Because at this point, they kind of sort of have to use Dam as Damnation. 3 mana, 4 mana, 5 mana, Batter Skull? Sure, that's a Batter Skull. Make ourselves some five fives. Upkeep, draw, and now Saga. We're just going to float one. Go get ourselves the Spear of Shadows. Alright, we do that. 
Count white. Disenchant your batter skull. Whip. No, this, these are six sixes. We thought monitor. Gotta jar ourselves a land. Don't find the land, but we do find another thing to make ourselves features bigger. This sets up perfectly for next turn after they use their damnation. Because then we'll have an extra champion. We get ourselves a 1 1. They go to 3. We'll have its champion plus cranial plating. Go ahead and tap out for that damnation you got in hand. I want you to use it. There we go. Yep. And tide hollow. That's unfortunate. Because now they take the edge champion. But they're still just dead. Unless they have another removal spell. In two turns. As we draw, we go Emery. Mill four. Milled over Ornithopter and another Disenchant. That's unfortunate. Land for turn. Is this plating? I have no cards in hand. You now need to deal with my Emery. Else I'm going to just give it Trample and Big Power. They draw, searching for an answer. Godless Shrine, you can't shock it in. So they could evoke. Piving needle, huh? Let's go ahead and try to give it big. Big up. Swing for the hills. Yep. Emery's a body sometimes. Who needs to actually cast the spell? Here we go. One, two. Would love to take the play. No. Is this workable? Turn one, not much. Turn two, plating. Turn three, six. Yeah, we can work with this. In all honest, we could put back the Memnite. Just have a real slow start. Hope that they're not explosive. Razor Tide Bridge, pass turn. All right, Bloodstained Mire. Second plating there is weird. Don't know how I feel about that. Triome. Best guy, Triome. Let's hope that this will work.
Prismatic endings, sure. Nothing out things in my head. Metal cyst, have ourselves a 3 3 living weapon. Or 4 4. Because Nettle Cyst is and an enchantment. I was like, how on earth? Monkey dog. Blood Saint Meyer here, not terrible. So we're looking at Jeskai four color. Hmm. I guess it's probably some Omnath like build. One, two, three, four, five. We're short from being able to thought monitor, so we need a zero drop here to be able to token destroy target artifact, and then yeah, you know, if you're using all these cards, that's two removal spells. Remand went to the bin. That's concerning. Razor Tide Bridge, sure. So, need the mana that we've got out. Dwarven Mine, oh god, it's this. Go ahead and show me Indominal Creativity. Yep. Into Tentacle, oh, Velomachus turns. Okay, we can deal with the Velomachus turns. Maybe. Hmm. There's Mari command and loot and treasure token. Not terrible. Probably not what they wanted it to do, but not terrible. They discarded Velomachus in a Scalding Tarn. Not gonna do anything there. In step, let's make ourselves a token. Never 4-4. Four, four. Draw step that. Have fun. Make a token. Make it a 5-5. Five, five. Woot woot. This will go searching. We will find ourselves Springleaf Drum. Land for turn. Ornithopter. Hot monitor. Sajanus Companion.
That guy. Plating hit for 11, take you to three. I'm assuming they're not going to block with their Velomagus. I guess we could have played the plating and equipped it and made them force to block. Because now they're trying to just develop Maka's value. Try to find an extra turn. We've got two blockers though. Come on, opponent. Pick what card you're gonna cast off your Velomachus. Growth Spiral. That's a card. Jump block with the O2. Do they have the mana to take an extra turn? Do they have the card to do so? I don't even know if this is turns or not. Could just be Velamaka's value. Brennan ticks? Sure. Uptick, get a land. It's fine. Plays a land. You've got some doors. I know what those are going to get, opponent. I'm not an idiot. Do this. Move this to there. Combat. Everything at your face. Do you have the bolt in hand to deal with the thought monitor? Are you losing your Velomachus? Dwarf in mine makes a dwarf. Dwarven Mine makes a dwarf. I guess like, no, Indomitable Creativity is a sorcery, I think, right? Yeah. So they need exactly Bolt here. Because Cranial Plating doesn't increase the toughness. Hmm. This doesn't have to be bolt. It has to be bolt-like effect. Could be Prismari Command, could be bolt, could be lightning helix. Anything to get rid of this thought monitor so that way they don't have to block with their Velomachus. Or they don't have to lose their Velomachus in blocks. Because they can block our companion. So they have it.
I guess if we had moved cranial plating. Yeah, we still only have one black, so it doesn't matter. We had put cranial plating on the companion. A then would have to have Prismari Command. Exactly Prismari Command. This buys them two more card outs. Damage? There's Mario Command to destroy target artifact, two damage there. <sighs> yeah. And those blocks happen. Frog, mate. <laughs> Opponent is, however, at one. Remand? Sure. What'd you draw? Go ahead and suit up. Give ourselves a 10 to. Opponent has to go three turns in a row with this Velomachus. Let's see. Turn one, does it happen? Yep. Snow covered island. Get themselves a triome, I'm assuming to cycle. In case I don't get there. Well, Amacus. Bolts us, that's not it. Although, actually, does has another bolt. Okay, that's fine. So, curious what would he have drawn? A Memnite. So, if we had done differently, they would have blocked, they would have been able to block all three and not have a creature remaining in. Theory, but they also had the bolt. I don't necessarily knew if they draw that. If they didn't, then they could have gone bolt Prismari command to destroy, keep their Velomachus around, and then they'd have to have something slightly different. Either way, dispatch. This is a Velomachus strategy. Canonist is interesting, only stops. The Velomachus the first time. Um, I need to go take a look at the rulings on Velomachus. Judge, what is Velomachus? You see, whenever look at the top seven cards, you may cast an instant sorcery spell without paying its mana cost, then put the rest on the bottom. It doesn't exile, so it's technically, I think, still in their library. Because it's cast. We'll try it. Worst that happens is I'm wrong. Do that. 
Now we need two more. I've got a good amount of removal. Bring in that and cut. Um, oh gosh, what are they, what are they gonna bring in? We have to hope that they don't have stony silence, but they're white. I think they have stony. I hate bringing this in preemptively, but I don't want to be blown out because we don't have it. Um, again, Mim Knights just don't do much. Cut there, cut here. Needle's not terrible. We could needle the... What's it called? Ren and Six. Doesn't really stop what we're trying to stop, though. I'd love to take the play. So, turn one, turn two is this, this, this. Turn three, we need... Artifact. We'll try it. It's a bit on the slow side. But we'll see. Just vault bridge, past turn. Bloodstained Mire. We draw a Darksteel Citadel. A slightly better draw for us there. Shadow Spear, Ornicropter, Fragamito. And this is five. This will remain a short. Being able to refill. Unfortunate. But hey. Got ourselves a 2 2 and a 2 0 oh, 2. Shall see if this gets us there. Triome. More specifically, the Teamer Triome. Shocks and Esteem Vents. Renin Sticks. Yep. Renin Sticks. Let's St. Meyer. Unfortunate for us. This we draw the companion. Costs two. I don't want to do that. This costs blue and one. Because then this draws us two. And this draws us two. And then we get another companion. Go ahead and attack them. This patch isn't great here, but it's not awful. I'll be able to kill Renin Six next turn. I say it's not awful. We need to stop their indomitable creativity. This they fetch two, four, six, ten. Bant to fairy? Sure. What are you bouncing? The four, four. Okay, makes sense. And goes up there. That's not terrible. But first things first. Let's try to find a kill. Didn't find a kill. So let's go Ink Moth Nexus Companion. This equip to the Frogmite. You this Lifelink Trample. Combat this at Teferi, this at Ren, this at Ren. They lose both their planeswalkers, damage happens. Can we go bobble bobble? 
see what they're drawing. Wear tear. That's a nice card. Down to 11 they go. Plays out the Dwarven Mine. Does this. I kind of want to let this happen. But no, because if they've swapped off the Velomachus plan. Because if they swapped off the Velomachus plan and are on the Emrakul plan, we get destroyed. <laughs> this way, we don't. Okay. Like everything that we did. Turn it back. Try to just hit multiple thought monitors in a row again. Easy peasy, right? No, we don't produce color. Yep. Sneep this off. Put back the ink moth. Yeah. Go razor tide pass. Hope that they don't have stony. Hmm. All right, snow covered mountain passes the turn. Razor tide bridge pass. Scalding tarn fetches probably gets a green source and then plays out Renin ticks. Yep. It's their turn back to hand. It's almost like their lines are predictable. Dark Steel Citadel, Ornicropter, Ornicropter, Ornicropter. Dot cast. Hold the Memnite. So this will be real bad because they get to go land off of the fetch land, get it back with the Renin 6, and then it doesn't matter if we kill the Renin 6 or not. Oh, we're just going to play a tapped land and then go up. Okay. This, and then we draw that. Interesting decision tree time. This to make six. Go with thought monitor. Try to find ourselves another land. Draw two. As the bolt, sure. Cast for one. a bit on the inside as they will get their indomitable creativity. We'll have enough to dispatch. Assuming that they aren't on an Emrakul swap plan. This is still Velomachus turns. Didn't get to see last time. Okay, so it is still Velomachus. Elamachus gets the swing. That's when they go Hercules Recall. Castle is zero, gets rid of our M Knight, that's fine. Block with an Ornithopter. Gets back Scalding Tarn. Springleaf Drum is a fun one.
Never wish twice in one match. Yeah, statistically speaking, whiffing twice in twice in one match is pretty rare. So this gives us plating plus equip plating. Assuming this is Dwarven Mine number two into Indomitable Creativity number two. Got a snow covered. Just time warps. All right. I don't know how many Velomachus they ran. Banner symbol, where are you? Tell me how many Velomachus you run in your list. Scalding turn down to 14. Dwarven mine gets dwarf. Scalding Tarn picked up. I dislike the number of cards in their hand, although one of them is a Scalding Tarn. This we draw, we draw poorly. <sighs> they might have counter magic if they do, they do. If they don't, we're golden. This, tap this guy, whip there, and if they have the bolt, they have the bolt. No. Yeah, both it ran. Eh, do it like this. They go ahead and they block. Do they have the removal for the ornithopter? They have the wear for the cranial plating, which we knew about. I'm stupid. But again, we're still in a decent spot here. Because they now no longer have a dwarf. They no longer have their wear. Well, they get to do this, and then they go get another dwarf. Guess we go champion next turn. Dwarf in mine happens. Hardcast Velomachus. Oh no. <laughs> I'm not surprised given the fact that they've gotten enough mana with Renin 6. But that does kind of just mean that we have to get champion plus nettle cyst to connect. Or nettle cyst and then equip an ornithopter. Two damage and destroy. Fun. Okay, we're at 15. And dispatch. Awkward. Awkward beyond belief. Hmm. I don't even know how many dwarven mines left they have. Not like it matters. They hold back. I would like to land. Etch champion.
So we're going to be able to stop the Ren and Alt. Which is very relevant. And, uh, I say stop. If they have a extra turn effect, we don't get to stop it. Begin combat. Attack Ren and Six, because I cannot let that thing alt. Damage happens. Tap for a white, this, white, nettle cyst. Living weapon. Bobble. Let's go ahead and bobble them. Just so that way we know what they're drawing for the turn. It is a land. <sighs> Close game. Close game there. We got two Velomachus hits. Both whiffing. So we would draw here, we'd draw a bridge. I mean, I guess we'd play bridge. We'd equip the Nettle Cyst, kill off the Renin Six, and then have a protected creature. Turn one, Frogmite and Memnite doesn't seem awful. And a Springleaf Drum. Allows us to have a turn two Nettle Cyst. No. Welding Jar. Welding Jar. Memnite. Frogmite. But it does guarantee us the turn three. Blood Crypts into play tapped, probably. Yep. Interesting to note, no Luris here. So let's see what opponent's on. Arid Mesa. Ardu? Sadness. I mean, we could have saved it with a Welding Jar. I'm not saving a Memnite. I'll save a Frogmite, but I'm not saving a Memnite. Okay. They fetch with the Sarid Mesa. Do they shock is the question. They do not. Okay. They're okay with taking two. They take two, go to 16, and it's their go. Double black. Bam. Cannot be regenerated. Relevant line of text. Thought sees me. Just absolutely destroy me here. Need a zero mana artifact. I can zero mana creature specif specifically. Or glimmer void, that works too. 
Metal cyst. Living weapon. We have ourselves a 7-7. Seven seven. It big. Problem is we cannot regenerate the germ if they have another destroy target creature. Red, red, black, pyromancer. That is fine. Opponent goes a digging. So the two lands. So opponent was flooding. That's unfortunate for them. Dot monitor. Plating. Interesting. Plating doesn't change our clock here. Go ahead and give it life link and trample. It's a nice eight eight. They take it and we will pass the turn. We're at 28, one card in hand. They're at eight. Another Pyromancer. They're really digging. Get rid of even more lands. Wow, that hurts. They discarded four lands. So we're looking at Mardu here. That's a lot of removal, so I want the Etch Champions. And Mardu has probably it has access to Stony Silence. Will a Mardu list run Stony Silence? Probably not. But they could be running things like Engineered Explosives, which is an, ar an artifact we can hit. Blood Moon. So Disenchant's not bad there. Um... Needle and Cage don't really interest me too much. Like, yeah, they have Croxa. I'm not bringing in Cage for Croxa. Um, so, yeah, I think we just want the Edge Champions and the Disenchants here. As far as what we don't want... Mem Knights are pretty weak. And then... Cut. The companions. Eh. We'll cut a ginger root, keep a companion. We could bring in the counter magic there if we wanted to bring in the counter magic package. I don't necessarily think that we do. So this is turn one, spring leaf drum, turn two, possible metals sent. <sighs> but if they have a hand disruption, this hand does nothing for a bit. <laughs> we'll try it. Let's see this turn one thought sees. Do it to me. Come on, Fish Gumbo. You got this, I believe. Hmm. Mm, right. Are they? I was about to say, did, are they about to just skip through their main, their first turn? Sacred Foundry shocked in. 
Red mana. Monkey. Okay. Uh, that draw changes things. You, this, this one. This one. This one. This one. This one. This is one, two, three, four, five. Not enough. It makes monkey bad. Black, white, Stoneforge? Sure. I'm concerned. But don't let them know that. Okay, they got a Cauldra. Monkey, no swing. This we... Draw land. There we go. All right. So, is there any way we can do this to play out the Sentinel and the Thought Monitor? The answer is no. So we just play out the Nettle Cyst. Give ourselves something that can compete with the Cauldra. Because they're if we swing with the Frogmite, they're not blocking. Path. Because any destruction spell. Well, let's destroy target creature again. But if they path, they then can't Cauldra. Prismatic Injing, exiling our germ. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not shocked about that one. Inquisition? Sure. Go ahead, take my CMC of three or less. Yes, they now know about the Thought Monitor. Oh no. They swing with the monkey. Gonna block. I would like to give this a regeneration shield. There goes your monkey. All right. The Citadel. One, two, three, four, five, six. Tap like so. Thought monitor. Draw ourselves some cards. Nice. Cast the Memnite. Cannot play the Thought Cast in hand. Swing with the Frogmite. Damage happens, and it's there it go. Assuming they're going to put an artifact into play. This is probably Cauldra. And um, considering that they're holding up black, it makes me think that they're trying to bait push. What? Minimally, why aren't you putting it in?
Are they saving up to try to dam here? That's probably what they're trying to do. Okay, they shame concede. All right, three, two. So, not... Mm. I guess let's see what we would have drawn because it technically matters. We would have drawn a companion. And uh, then we would have gotten Shadow Spear with the Saga. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We couldn't have equipped the Shadow Spear though. Anyway, so we got the 3-2 there. Yeah, opponent did kind of just derp there. So, 3-2 with the Emery version, 2-3 with the non-Emery version. Emery didn't really come up too often. Um, the couple of times that we did use Emery, it was nice. But the times where we didn't, it still felt fine. Shadow Spear, though, very good improvement to the deck. As a nice equipment to grab off of Urza's Saga and just give our things trample and lifelink. So definitely agree with that upgrade of the one of Shadow Spear. I don't know how I feel about the Ginger Brute. I might try a Signal Pest over a Ginger Brute and see if I like that. There's lots to explore with this affinity list and we're definitely gonna be trying to do so, whether or not we're gonna be able to or not, who knows. But that being said, we went three, two. Deck feels very nice and strong. I'm glad to finally have Affinity back on the menu. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.